Hey, everybody! Welcome back to the What Would You Change movie podcast. We are the Super Monkey Fighters. I am Loki, here with Papa Nugget and Monkey Feathers. How's it going? Hello. Great. This week, the movie we chose was The Midnight Sky. It's a 2020 film, uh, came out on Netflix, starring George Clooney, uh, directed by George Clooney, written by Lily Brooks Dalton, and based on the book Good Morning Midnight by Mark L. Smith. And I'm going to say right now, Good Morning Midnight is a better name than The Midnight Sky. So it stars George Clooney, Felicity Jones, David Oyelo, Kowilin, Kowilin, Springall. Uh, we're going to be done with that. Uh, there's a bunch of people in this movie. You'll recognize a lot of them and you won't with other ones. The blurb is this post-apocalyptic tale follows Augustine, a lonely scientist in the Arctic, as he races to stop Sully and her fellow astronauts from returning home to a mysterious global catastrophe. And that makes about as much sense as this movie does. The biggest thing that I did love, and I said this the entire time, George Clooney actually does a pretty good job in this, just from an acting standpoint. He seems like an old man who's about to die. The way he moves, the way he acts, the way he... Just all about all of that was just... It's the subtle things that, that make a performance really well. So that stood out as something that I really liked. I did appreciate the fact that he didn't tell his daughter, his real daughter, that he was her dad. Uh, I think that would have lessened that the impact of that whole scene. If he had been like, oh, by the way, <laughs> yeah. I'm the dad you never knew. And I had plenty of opportunity to introduce myself. Yeah. And how or to be part to. of your life and just chose not to until the end of the world. Like and that would that would you know, potentially change the story. Because now is she conflicted? Yeah. Like she needs to go to Earth yeah. to meet him or. Yeah. And so, yeah, yeah, he just kind of. Him knowing that throwing and then not letting her yeah. know like it's like he he doesn't want it he wants her to yeah. continue on with her life he yeah. doesn't want to disrupt that like yeah like i, I did appreciate that you know, he wasn't looking for redemption or anything like that like either way the world's ending or not he's dead because he's got a terminal disease but just you know he wanted to just make sure that things were okay and you know but didn't have to up disrupt her life at all so i did like i did appreciate that Initially, that's that's kind of one of the things that that just stood out to me as a really big positive with George George Clooney's acting in this. Yeah, and I I liked I liked him as he was bonding with the little girl throughout the movie because it felt very genuine, like a father daughter relationship. And I mean, spoiler alert: the daughter, the young version of the of the girl, is his imagination, and she's not really there. Yeah. But even then, it still was like he became very protective of her as they were traveling to mm -hmm. this other space station to where he didn't want to lose her. And so I, I did like that bonding relationship that he had, real or not. I felt that that helped play into George Clooney's acting. I really liked whatever the mysterious moon they found, Jupiter moon they found that was yeah. completely perfectly habitable. Yeah. Which is, um, which is strange. I like the cause, look of that. Yeah. Cause when you think about it, we haven't, we basically mapped out like our immediate solar system of the planets yeah. and the moons and things like that. So the fact that there's a mysterious yeah. moon that just comes in that so is now here's, habitable. Here, 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 here's, and this is the closest I'll get to politics again. Um, the entire budget of NASA from its inception to now is less than one year's military spending. So have we mapped it all? No, I'm just... <laughs> Probably not. Well, it just um, seems like it because we keep branching yeah. further and further out into space beyond yeah. our own immediate surroundings. Uh, so that's yeah, just space kind is of big. why. You, you, you would think something like Jupiter... Uh, we would probably know most of them at, by this point in time, but yeah, it's also strange that it's a perfectly habitable planet with no, like they just show up and it's there and there's vegetation and they're growing wheat and yeah, it's perfect. the brief scene that you see it. That's also a dream. So maybe it's a dream. Like, you know, <laughs> so the visuals, I mean, they were visuals. If it was 1996, they would have been impressive, I think. Um, but it's like just kind of, run of the mill for me on that. I I, th um, I I don't think there's anything that stood out as being bad to me um, with the visuals. Yeah. Like I, I thought everything was spot on. Um, like it wasn't well, distracting. 
I liked it. I, I'll say that most of the CGI I felt like was fairly well done. I mean, the scene that stood out was the, it was like right after the, like asteroid field collides with their ship and their, the other astronaut gets um, injured and they pop off her helmet yeah. and the blood kind of floods the container. Like yeah. I thought that was a pretty good scene, but the dream sequences, I felt like some of that CGI wasn't as good as it could have been. Like it felt like I could see the green screen behind them as they were, you know, moving and doing things on the, the new Jupiter moon like the K-23, mm. I think it's called. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of, I'm, uh, I'm split with the CGI, but I would say for the most I, part, I, I did relatively like yeah, it. Yeah, I, I, I would say that there would like, in this day and age, it was exactly to be expected. Like it wasn't yeah. bad. It wasn't, but it's also in the day and age that we live in, like that's not a spectacle to me. They, they did it well, but it didn't blow me away. Like I said, it, if it was 1996 again, it would have been like, whoa, these are amazing. But you're like, I've already seen all of these shots before in the spaceships. Yeah. And so. Monkey Feathers, what else did you like about this film? Like I said, I did like, you know, I agree with you about George Clooney's acting and him bonding with the little girl. But one of the things that I actually relatively liked, and it was up until probably the final act of the movie, but I liked the contrast between what was going on in space and what was going on on Earth because I felt that Earth was very chaotic and very, this guy's trying to survive and he's trying to get this message to this spaceship that's coming back. And what's on the spaceship is just more of a relaxed environment. Like yeah. these people are reliving their memories or reliving, I, I, I would say their memories because that's what they seem like they're I, experiencing. They've got this weird a holographic, <laughs> yeah, like memories from home so you don't feel homesick kind of a yeah. thing that they can um, be a part of in the scene yeah. but yeah, there, there's also a line of dialogue from the captain of the spaceship where he says you know if this was a because uh, they've lost contact with everybody but they said if this was a less experienced crew it'd be panic right now but they're they're all just doing their jobs and you know th yeah. there's tensions and there's worry but they're but it's you know, they know what they're doing as the closer they're getting to earth the more kind of chaotic it's getting on the ship. And the, I would say a little bit as the guy's getting closer to the space station, the kind of the calmer it gets a little bit because as soon as the scene where he gets lost in the snowstorm and then the sun shines through and he can see the, the space station that he was going to. So it just was kind of an interesting shift in uh, elements to each of these two parts of the story because as the spaceship is coming closer to earth they're now entering into an asteroid field that's destroying parts of their ship i did like the contrasting elements relatively up until the final act nuggets yeah i mean kind of <laughs> what everyone said i i, I thought it was like well produced overall um like, I think it, it had everything going for it that one could ask for um, mm -hmm. from a technical side. But that's it. Yeah, there were no like, like there were no microphones that dropped into the shots. <laughs> or, yeah. Like, like it, it, it should be a better movie. It could be I a better movie. That's exactly how I feel. Yeah. But it's everything well, I mean, else it. that doesn't I'll get at this. work given the movies that netflix tends to create this did kind of feel like it would be released in theaters it felt like it was a higher quality made movie whether or not that means it's actually a quality movie is a different factor but I, it did relatively feel like you would have seen this in the movie theaters so i'll give it that yeah it did have that feeling it felt like a, a yeah. movie and not just a a thrown together Netflix show. It's a little bit truer of a lot of the Netflix, like the Netflix series, the TV series that they do. They either range from amazing high quality mm -hmm. to like they gave a bunch of people like 15 bucks and okay. some here's a camera. Go make a movie. <laughs> go do <laughs> <Yeah>. it. <laughs> yeah. So right off the bat, I'm going to just jump into this one a little bit. I, you know, maybe, you know, uh, commandeer the ship because right off the bat with this film, 
there's a twist that's fairly obvious throughout most of the film. Super obvious. Uh, two, I would say that you know two main twists. I think um, problem I have with it is in foreshadowing that they don't so much foreshadow it as they just outright lie to you. The opening scene when all of the scientists are leaving the research facility. And it's kind of setting the stage of what's going on. There's a woman who's looking for her daughter and panicked. And another woman comes up and says, no, I saw her get on this other helicopter. They'll meet you on the ground. If that happened in the background, it would be foreshadowing. But it cuts away from George Clooney and everything that's going on with him to focus on that lady. Mm-hmm. That's not the kid that's there, but they're setting that up so that they're, you know, it's, it's a lie. It's, a bait and switch. it's not, it's, yeah, it's not foreshadowing. It's not like, Hey, this was going on in the background and it's something he's maybe kind of paying attention to, but not really. Right. Yeah. It's as the audience, you're pushed right into the forefront of that. And so I think that's why the movie doesn't pay off is because you're like, well, you guys, this isn't, you didn't lead me leave these clever little clues throughout. You just kind of made it obvious. And then had this one big lie at the beginning, like, and I think that's the biggest failing of this is that the twist doesn't work because it's obvious what's going on the whole time. Pretty much everything else in the movie though was weird. I think they shot this trying to be an action thriller, not realizing that it was more of a heartfelt movie. Like, there's shots where characters are talking back and forth. So it's the, the, the pilots cause they decide to go back to earth. Right. Mm-hmm. That whole scene feels like those two are getting ready to fight. Like <laughs> it's shot at angles through like scaffolding and things. And it's like nineties action movie. It's not, it's not this touching scene where the two, you know, I mean, one of them is explaining how he wanted to, he never had a daughter, but he thought that if he did that, his or his daughter died when she was young and one of the other astronauts would have been friends. And so he wants to take her body home. And it's actually this really touching scene with the dialogue and the interactions between the two guys, but it's shot in a way that you're like, man, these guys are going to fight. Like <laughs> what's going on here. And right. there were just a couple of like those kinds of things where you're just like, I, I don't, I don't care. I, I'm confused because this is, like I didn't understand the, the relationships yeah. and the in, the interpersonal dynamics between everyone on the ship. Yeah. Like it was just it felt weird and it's, yeah. like yeah. they didn't feel like characters was, or a group of characters that they just seemed awkward around each other. Like the, all of it just seemed awkward. I, I don't know. Yeah, it, it's it was a weird thing to me as well. Kind of like the fight scene. That's not a fight scene. Um, she's pregnant. The captain's the dad. But then the other crew member, engineer, whoever it was, like they've got a sonogram or a ultrasound or a, they even like this machine was made to detect alien life forms in your body. Joke kind of a thing. Like that scene was like a very touching scene between the two of them. And so I thought like, are those two together? Because the captain is <laughs> like I not really. Too. Like, yeah. Because, is, is, <laughs> yeah, it's. It, it it's foreshadowing, right? But it's foreshadowing something that's not really there. It was just like, oh, this is a touching mem- moment between friends. And you're like, eh, it was kind of a, a weird, like, because nobody else treats her that way. They all treat her like, you know, like a comrade. Well, or a, you And know, I mean, a, to, to be fair, though, the they're the only two women on this ship. So I think yeah. that if it was as a touching moment as they were having in that scene, it would it would kind of border the line of, no, 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 no. Like, we're we're just friends. You're hitting on me. Yeah, but that's so and think, that, that's the thing is that's that's the only scene where they interact that way. But that's the only scene where anyone interacts that way. Like the the, yeah. the actual couple don't interact that way. Like they don't have that stolen moment when they're alone where they actually you know, which is what a lot of those scenes do. And that you know it's cliche, but it's it's cliche for a reason. Like that's yeah. how you showcase that those two are a couple. Yeah. Where. He's like, nope, I'm the captain, and you listen to me and do everything that I say. It seemed very clinical. Because I'm the captain, and it's not, yeah. It seemed so it's very just, formal. Like, yeah. less of a relationship and more just, we're together yeah. in this situation, and now, like, you're pregnant, it wasn't supposed to happen, but now I'm going to stick with you because I'm the dad, <laughs> and we're just going to uh, stick yeah. it out. Yeah, so. and it's those weird scenes where you're like, you're not foreshadowing these things, you're just doing weird things, and so... 
um, which I'm really actually surprised by George Clooney as a director because the other things that he's directed have been amazing and he's paid attention to those kinds of details. So it's just really strange to see this like, like they shot it a bunch of different ways, but didn't realize that they didn't know what the movie was going to be until they were done editing it. Like halfway through editing, they're like, oh, instead of this being a, a thriller, let's make it a heartfelt movie. Like, because even those two, the, the two pilots, that whole scene, even well before that, um, there's the one pilot just he's walking around. It's like following him as he's doing stuff. Like my wife said, like, well, he's going to be the bad guy who sabotages the whole mission or something like that, because it just felt like that. Yeah. Like, you know, he's walking around doing these kind of secretive like, things like, like watching people in the shadows and stuff like, yeah, like it feels like he's like, like it's going to be an action movie, but then it's not. And like, did we even care that they decided to go back to Earth? No. It's like, okay, no, whatever. I, we needed yeah. someone, I guess. Seem, seems like a silly decision, given the fact that. And I, yeah. I didn't get the whole, yeah. like, I was trying to. So everyone's leaving the kind of the Arctic uh, science uh, station. It's like, where are they all going? Yeah. Like, where's everyone evacuating to? Like, yeah, I didn't well, I get mean, that. It, like, are they going in, kind of, in space? Or are they of, just going home? I think, like... It It kind of, like, talked about when... I guess it's... I, I believe it was George Clooney's character talking to his daughter, where he said that they were evacuated to, like, underground bunkers that were temporary. Mm-hmm. That was just what it was going to be, that they're yeah. basically, at this the, moment, humanity's now dead because Yeah, it just yeah. didn't seem fleshed air. out. It's just like, we need them yeah, to go I, somewhere, yeah. so they're disappearing. Vague, vague apocalypse. Don't don't focus on it. Don't worry about it. Like, <laughs> if, you know, Something's like, wrong with the don't air. Don't worry because, about the details. Yeah. Yeah. Just trust us. Yeah. Like, yeah. Those are the kinds of things where it's like, I get the decision to not make that because it if you don't get those details right, or you don't make those interesting, people are going to, you know, tear you apart for it. But if you don't do anything with it, you're just like, all right, I'm supposed to just accept that all these things are the case. And that, you know, but it might be interesting to kind of know that, especially considering that the story becomes a weird survival movie in the middle, except yeah. he finds like a Swedish trailer park that suddenly sinks into the ocean. <laughs> and <laughs> It's like, uh, we got to figure out a way to, to he, he's on dialysis. So we got to figure out a way to get his dialysis machine, his portable dialysis machine, which to be fair, it is the future. It's like 20 years in the future. So you know, maybe that's a thing. Maybe it's a thing now. I don't know. I don't, I don't need it, but we just, we've got to create an obstacle for him. So let's not talk about that. Yeah, he just, plunged into ice water ice and water was able to survive that but on his own. Yeah. yeah. Don't worry about trying to piece that one together. Yeah. It just accept it. Or he's got super blood or something. We'll start maybe start transitioning into the uh, what we would change, right? Because pretty much most of this film, I think we didn't like outside of a few things. Unless there's anything else anybody anybody wants to jump into, because well, so it's it's very interesting that you're now transitioning into the change, because the the one thing that stood out beyond anything. And it would be what I absolutely change is how does he survive? Because Mm -hmm. throughout the movie, you're led to believe that, well, he's with this young girl and they're, you know, they're going to go to this other station and contact uh, the spacecraft that's coming back. But he's getting into all these different situations like the situation with the the trailer park and it falls like water's leaking up and it falls and he loses his equipment and then like he crashes his snowmobile into the water and then his dialysis machine goes in they're in the arctic which it's snowing he's now wet he has no gear the night it's the middle of the night how does he not die and then the situation with the snowstorm where his parka didn't get wet (laughs) But his imaginary, is, his, his hallucination saved the parka and the gun. But that's my point. <laughs> exactly. Is, yeah. is when you're led to believe that he's there with this little girl, I get mm-hmm. that you can now sort of believe that, oh, she was one that saved it. She was one that rescued the parka yeah. and the gun. 
great. But when you find out at the end of the movie that that isn't uh, that isn't she's not real, the person who's there. She's, yeah. yeah. So how does he survive? Because he's mm-hmm. going to freeze to death because he's wet, and he has yeah. no shelter to effectively get warm in. And so yeah. that's one of the biggest things that I would absolutely change is because when you're leading to the foreshadow, well, I may not even foreshadow, but when you're left to believe that this girl is a real girl and not part of his imagination, but then you take that away, you're then yeah. taking away the plausibility of him living because yeah. it just doesn't make sense because as soon as he got into that water and he got out of that water, he's going to freeze to death. Yep. Like there's, there's no explanation well, and, beyond that. He's just dead yeah. and he freezes to death. And- that's the biggest thing that I would change is instead of having this struggle for him is surviving against the elements in completely unrealistic and implausible ways. Like, Cause the only thing you can think of is that entire sequence was a dream, just like everything else he's done. And all he did was hop on a snowmobile and just travel up to the other, the random weather station that has a stronger satellite than his fully fledged <laughs> science facility. That's actually tracking the. So yeah. Anyway, Behind all, beyond all of those kinds of things, um, you make the conflict more personal, right? It's him trying to figure out who this little girl is. And he's retelling stories about his past to her just to pass the time, those kinds of things. Or he connects with the spaceship sooner and he's keeping from them what's been going on or what or why. Um because he doesn't want them to freak out or panic. And then, you know, like more interaction within that and less of him just alone in the wilderness trying to like, you know, by the time the wolves show up randomly, he just like somehow loses the girl in his own imagination. Again, she's not real, so it doesn't matter. So, you know, none of those things matter in the end. They get you to that point because it's just the ramblings of a dying man. That's what I would have changed is just specifically that trailer park going underwater sequence. Um, I'd maybe keep everything else. Cause there's a down, there's a plane that's crashed. And it's like a billionaire with a bunch of art work and he's dying, freezing to death. The pilot was half eaten by wolves. Like that scene, especially where the, 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 the girl shows up, like you can kind of see it's, it's foreshadow or the thing that that's foreshadowing is he knows he's going to die no matter what. He knows this girl's going to die no matter what because it's the end of the world. Yeah. And so it foreshadows what he's going to have to do at the end of it. But it, that doesn't become a thing at all because they just kind of they kind of just sort of touch on it. And then it's not a thing later because it's just revealed that she's the younger version of his daughter in space. And she just kind of she literally just moves out of frame. And that's the last you see of the little girl because... He's talking to there's, his real daughter. He's talking to his real daughter. And so there, there's no transition into that. Or, you know, they could have done some interesting things where to, that reveal could have been done a lot better. I just think, uh, you know, ultimately I would have changed, one, the big lie at the beginning. I would have made that more subtle in the background, not in your face. In your face. Hey, this is important. You need to pay attention to it kind of a shot. And just got rid of that stupid <laughs> like even if all of it was real even if the little girl was real and all that kind of stuff was there like again how, how i mean it's how it's sub zero temperatures and you're soaking wet like you're going to freeze instantly and yeah. you know i only have one other thing that i would change and that is effectively the fate of humanity because you're not well. You're not. You're not told what happens. You're not told about the event. You're just kind of shown that well, Earth's atmosphere looks toxic, but we don't quite know what happened. And Did now they have a respirator. Like yeah, a, to go outside and breathe. Know. But they have this technology to build relatively. Jupiter's it's far because well, it's space, but it's not yeah. so far. To where you could build spaceships to then, you know, well, take humanity. And so they, right they, they, now... They kind of make it seem like something happened quickly. Like it wasn't an overtime sort of a thing. Like it was three weeks before something exploded 
you know, nuclear war is kind of what I, because you see a map where there's like city centers yeah. where there's radiation and it, coming and it out looks of. Like it. But it, Wikipedia again, is called an unidentified catastrophe. Uh, yeah. yes. Things, they, they, they don't they don't say it they, they give you some subtle hints but it's also the fate of humanity they don't tell you how big the colony is they don't tell you if there's a colony if this was the pilot program to go there and just well, see if it was viable for human life and now there's just two people left well and that, that, that's what I'm getting to is the fact yeah. that now they're basically Adam and Eve here to repopulate this planet that will yeah. be the new planet of Earth, so to speak. So I don't like that being the option because it's not. It's not a viable option. It's you, not a viable yeah. option. It's, and that's thing they they do they, the things that they allude to. They talk about a colony ship when they can't contact anybody. They can't contact the colony ship that should be a week behind them. But they also never try to actually contact the the col the planet. So. You know, th there's just a lot of those kinds of things that are just left up to question where it's like, no, you should, you, you need an answer for this because there's not much of a, of a story here that we're not going to question the other things that happen. Like those are the events that happen. We're going to have questions about it. You know, it would be better to have a, some kind of an answer than not, even if it's a MacGuffin kind of an answer, like, oh, it's on the other side of Jupiter. And so we don't have line of sight, so we can't communicate directly with the, you know, with the, the colony or and, maybe well, the colony is already populating the, yeah. the planet, the moon. Yeah. Cause it's a moon. You know, so oh, maybe they're Earth, already Earth's, populating it. Earth's dead, but at least we've got 70,000 people on another planet where we can repopulate the, you know, humanity will survive kind of a thing. That, like, that's, that's my point is yeah, because it's, at the end of the movie, you're kind of left just thinking that maybe these are the last two survivors of humans yeah. and they're pregnant with a child and they're going to, I guess, repopulate this moon for ever to come. And right. you just are left it's, with that. Yeah. And they have enough yeah, food to so. make it back to Jupiter. Yeah. Well, I mean, they technically would now because they're they like would. They're, three people down. They were so. a crew of five and now they're two of them. So. <laughs> Anyway, I mean, that's a dark, twisted way to look at it, but technically, yeah. Well, but also it was like a two or three year journey, I think, that they were already on something like that. So they're going to have a baby in between that. And there's just the two of them left on the ship. Like they don't have baby hope space you guys know how to, Yeah. And hope nothing goes wrong in the, the, the labor and that you guys know exactly what to do. Like, <laughs> I, you know, it's just. Ultimately, it comes uh -huh. down to it's, it's the story of George Clooney's character, Augustine, who seems like his flashbacks. He just seems like he's selfish and kind of continues to be. And then he dies. Right. It's a reflection. All movie, of humanity right? dies with him. Like, yeah, it's his but, reflection. And then it's like they want to tell the story of his relationship or potential relationship with his yeah daughter that he never actually ever met and so they do it through the imaginary uh child yep. and so like their connection their relationship is what the movie's entirely about yeah. and everything else doesn't contribute to it at all and yep. it it's just like it just felt like it's weeds in the movie that don't really matter and Honestly, like him just ref reflecting about how he probably has a re regrets that he wish he wouldn't have been so work focused now that he's looking yeah. back and okay, whatever. Like, and every like, well, yeah, like you can't, there's not enough there in the movie for it to stand on its yeah. own. So they put all this other stuff in, like the, the that doesn't have anything to do like with anything. The, the whole having to go out and fix the ship after going through the asteroid field. That just feels like we just mm -hmm. needed an action scene. Let's make this yeah. happen. Yeah. And yeah. so, and it's like, well, I don't care that this, the one space astronaut died. Like, I don't care. Yeah. Like, I, yeah. who was she? And that's, like, that's exactly what it was, was the three of them are going out. And I was like, so who do you think is going to die? Is it going to be the captain or is it going to be the engineer? Cause obviously the pregnant lady is not going to die. Cause yeah. she's pregnant. the daughter of the, you know, She's pregnant. She's she's the daughter of the, the, the dude back on Earth. I didn't know they had My maternity like, oh, it's be the engineer. either. Apparently so. 
Let's, yeah, they expand. <laughs> They've got little little uh, pouches that <laughs> they can unbutton. Um, but that's what my, what, my, what my wife said. Was she's like, oh, it's going to be the engineer, of course. Like it's obvious. Like, and I don't care. Like, yeah. let's just get through it. Which is exactly what I was saying was after everything's all said and done and she's kind of coming in, I'm like, okay, just kill her already. We know she's going to die. Like feathers. You said earlier that you liked that scene. That's another one of those scenes where it's like, you guys are focused on the wrong things in this scene. Like you keep showing shots of them trying to fix her, but all they're doing is like just touching. Mm -hmm. Like they're not actually doing anything, but you're not showing her face or her reaction or the interaction between her, the the, the two people. And I, I will say that I liked the use of CGI in that scene yeah, with the and blood and it was like, as it hit things, it broke apart. And that, right, that's yeah. what I liked. I, yeah. beyond that, but I'm just like, whatever, but the, that, that scene focused on part. those kinds of things mm-hmm. and not well, the yeah. emotions of the people going on, on. And even when they tried to shoot it, they shot it from weird angles where you were like looking through space helmets and like, yeah, like I'm not, I'm not, I, I'm already not invested in these characters and you're showing me their death and I don't care. Like just, let's just move through this and get back to the actual story. Like, yeah. And it was interesting to see that the, the little girl, the hallucination doesn't speak because he had never heard his daughter speak. He'd only ever seen her that one time, Mm -hmm. but he doesn't spend that time building an actual relationship with his little girl. He's just, no, you're a kid and I'm going to keep you safe. Like, he never really feels like he's trying to become her father to me. He feels like more just, I've got to keep you safe because you're a kid yeah. and you're helpless. And so he feels really like awkward. Like he, he doesn't know how to interact yeah. with the child. It's like, yeah. Oh, what do and I he, do? He doesn't, he doesn't, Let me look at the manual. Yeah. <laughs> and he doesn't ever like have any really grand epiphanies with the kid other than the dream he's having when his trailer park is sinking into the Arctic. Like he's kind of talking about his, her mother, who was his ex but he's not like, that's not a revelation there. That's not, not a connection that's built. It's just, he's like, Oh, I remember your mom. She was really loud. Like, and that's why you're quiet. Like she's the opposite of you. And it's just like, well, yeah, but give us something more, build a connection with the girl. Like she doesn't talk. So you have to talk the whole time and you tell the story of everything that's going on. And, but that's not what happens. It's, there's some flashbacks to like a dinner party and a conversation where she's like, I'm not pregnant. And then a scene where he's at an observatory and they drive off. Like there's not really any big grand epiphanies or lessons learned. It's just like, well, that was my life. And now I'm going to die looking at the Northern lights. But he inspired his daughter, even though she didn't know that he is her father. Yep. It's so touching. Yeah. What would you change, Nugget? Um, the pacing. It was a very long, slow, and boring movie. Yeah. Uh, like, either compress stuff, and make it go faster, make make right. it more interesting. <laughs> like, yeah. even if you threw more action elements in and made it go faster, like that would be an improvement. Right. So you so you want action elements and less heartfelt, touchy moments? Well, well the problem is, the is there's is, a lot of filler. Um, like all the yeah. other characters, like replace that with action, it would be a better movie. Um, because I already don't care about yeah. those characters, so at least make it entertaining to watch. Yeah. yeah. The thing is, you can have an interesting movie that's not full of explosions. Like yeah. Yeah, the interesting things to me would be the story of him and his daughter and learning more about that and less mm-hmm. about him. Again, I don't know. Why is there like a random Swedish trailer park in between these two? Like, this is the Arctic and it seems very populated, not only by animals and things, but by like people. Like, there's just random research stations just littered out throughout the Arctic. And it's like, You're oh, You're focusing well, great. too much Here's... on details that aren't there. You should stop. Yeah. And... Also, why does it? Why does it sink? Like, just you know, I guess the only way to think about that logically is that didn't actually happen. Like, he just got off his snowmobile and decided to walk the last few miles (laughs) for some random reason. He's he's losing his mind. He's old. He's you know dying so yeah who knows who knows if any of it even happened if he's just dying in a research facility and is imagining that his daughter is still alive in the spaceship so you know again 
as always with ambiguous movies, it's better when we make up our own as we go <laughs> along. Seems to be a theme we come across quite a bit. So I wanted to like this. I, I, I really did. Yeah. Um, I think that there's a, a the, the story there could be a lot better. I just think the execution of the actual story just kind of fell flat and it feels like another one of those 2020 just release it. Cause whatever <laughs> people are home, they'll watch it. And that's just kind of how it felt. So anyway, let us know down below. You guys can watch it. It's on Netflix. Like there's no reason not to see this other than everything that we've said in this <laughs> podcast. But um, maybe we're completely wrong. Know. You know, that's the yeah, thing. Like you might like it. Like, like I said, there, it is, there are some visual things that are, are well done. They're just not new or interesting. So at least to me, so maybe they would be to you. Um, but tell us your thoughts down below and tell us what we should watch next and tell us if we should change things about this. Just, just leave comments down below and uh, we'll be sure to respond to them. So uh, in the meantime, we'll catch you guys in the next one. Adios. See ya.